CSS transition effects on click. In this video, we're going to focus on that specifically, the CSS transition effects on click. So how are we going to do this? So basically with this is the moment you click on a specific element or item, at that moment, we will create an effect here. And a very common one is especially on, for example, and let's start with really the basics here is to ex explore the input. And this is a very common one. And here we also want to focus on specifically the outline that is around that input. So let's explore here. For example, we're going to create here a div. Now I'll give this class a form box or, or basically an input box. Basically within here, we're going to put in a input. So we say here input, and then we say here type, this could be anything. Let's put in here text. That's what we really want to do is we want to focus on the class here. So we're going to give you this class as well. What's the class of this one? Well, specifically, this could be, uh, uh, well, we can say a transition. Transition. That will be a specific class. So let's give it a class of transition here. And let's save this first and refresh. You can see here we have this. There you are. I want to do only this one here. We just get this class here, dot, and just give it some proper uh, margin and padding we say here just um, padding of 30 pixels so we will push it a bit more away from the corner edges and this will just increase the size and you can see here this is already what we have once we click on this you can see there is already a on click effect which is called the outline however this is not that desirable especially if you don't have uh, borderlines or you only have a borderline at the bottom so let's start here and solve this. So what I'm going to do here first of all is I'm going to give it here some padding. And this padding will be top and bottom 10 pixels, left and right will be 15 pixels. And I will say here font size, I'll just increase the font size to 20 pixels so it's easier to spot. And if we save this, we have this here, we have this bigger item here. All right, that's fine. So what we could do maybe here as well is we could put here in a uh, text align center to push the item to the center. Yes, and this could be, for example, enter your username or something like that. So we can say here place, placeholder, username, save that. There you are. So that looks all fancy. Let's start and work with the item here. So what we're going to do here is basically we're going to say here border is zero. So what will happen is that we will force the border zero and then what we'll do is we'll say here border bottom and in here we can say one pixel or let's make this three pixels for now three pixels and we give it a very light color gray like triple nine hashtag triple nine and then we say here solid so basically the order doesn't matter so much but three pixels solid triple nine that's fine once we save this refresh we have now here this nice underline border or the basically the border at the bottom but as you can see here what happened is the outline the outline is very useful because as you can see if i don't click on it but i use tab then you still can see we are here so what i'm going to do is i will just add up here another item and you will see this is why outlines can be very useful so if i save these and then refresh and if i tap here all right i'm now there and then if i tap again we're there and there you are so this is useful but Let's start and explore this, how we can use this. So what we can do here is the following. And this is why on click or basically not only on click, but on active. But because right now what happens is when we are active on here or on focus, so we're focused on this item at that moment, it starts to work. But the moment we switch our focus, we move away here. So let's start and use this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use here a transition. So basically we will transform. What are we going to transform? We're going to transform a specific item or transition here, sorry. This should be transition, later on will be transformed. And here we just get a specific item. So let's say we want to transform the border bottom. What we want to do is we want to increase this or we want to change the color the moment it is active. So we can say here, hash, uh, we can say here how many seconds will it take. Let's say we do two seconds. So you see a slow graduate process from whatever it is to the next item so then here we can say in our transition class 
we're going to put in the following. We say here on focus. So the moment we are on focus, this is what we want to see. We want to see the border bottom. We're going to put that in here. And what we want to put in here is the following is, the, for example, the color. We want another color showing. So we say border bottom, say hashtag, and this could be blue or hashtag zero F zero, meaning it's uh, not blue. I think that's this should be blue if it's zero. Zero zero F means this is blue or neon color blue. So once we refresh here and save, refresh. As you can see, something happens. Oh, what we need to do, of course, here, we need to maintain the same structure. So we say here solid as well, three pixels and solid. Now we could only set here the color itself specifically. So once we click on that, you can see it starts to adjust itself. And then once we click away, it will gradually disappear again. However, we have still this outline here and let's remove the outline because you can see here now, we basically don't need the outline if we have this kind of beautiful or this animation effect. So why is this so important? We, I, I assume basically the trends is going more into animation because if you look at it, the moment you click on it, it becomes far more appealing. And then when you can type on it, here you are. So what we can do here is the following. We'll say here, outline zero. We're going to remove the outline completely. And once we click on this, there you are. You can see now it's adjust. And if we have here text, let's say here name, here, uh, what we can do is, for example, if we have the text, we can give the text matching color here as a, uh, a triple nine. And then what we want to do is then give it a transitioning effect here. So how to do that? If you have two items for a transition, basically we need to get two items uh, set up here in the transition property. So first of all, what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to give it the color. I say color for the font color. And this font color will be triple nine. So it will be very consistent with our uh, borderline here. So once we have this, the next thing what I want to do here, is we'll say here, color will be uh, blue as well, electric blue, or neon blue, so that's fine, that's this one here. So we save this, so the moment we save this, what we need to do here, because right now if we save this, it would just jump basically here. And if I say here, hello, test, and if I move away, it just jumps, as you can see here. So this is great, but not great enough. And the reason why is we, how can we set up the transition double? If you would say, well, we probably have to put in another transition, and then we would say like this, you would get color, and we say here yeah, again, two seconds. This won't work, as you can see here, as we have this, you can see here, this might, or you, you, it gets a delayed effect. So what we really wanna do is we wanna create these together. So we say here just a comma and then put in this color indicating that we want to focus on the color together and this all should work along. So once we have this, now if you go, you can see here, it starts to absolutely match together with it. And this is quite nice. And with this, you create a type of animation or interactivity or user experience with your viewer. And that is very useful. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.